as Keith said, I'm Bankwest's agricultural economist, and my role is sort of looking at looking backwards and also looking forwards and sort of trying to work out the impact on how this year is going to have on um, farmers. And I started to look at when I started to look at this, um, I thought probably the best thing to do instead of looking forward is to actually look back and to see, to look at the impact, what's happened in the past and then go forward. And not telling everyone how to suck eggs, but I thought if we look at farming, I've just pulled out a couple of rainfall graphs and what we clearly see, you know, there's the sawtooth nature of rainfall over time, that farming has good years and bad years. and it really shows out that, looking historically, I've pulled out data from York and Westonia, just average annual rainfall, and you can see that there are good and bad years. And historically, what we did was we, we addressed that by having a mixed operation. We ran combination of, of cropping, but we also had livestock on the farm as well. And because livestock were fairly low inputs, we ran a fairly low um, we ran a fairly low cost input system and farmers were also running with low gearing levels and, and that may have been because of the, um, the rationing of credit by banks but it also may have been because of a perception of the whole community at the time. Since 1990 and when we pulled out the, um, the floor price for wool, um, we've really seen that sheep progressively left the the farm and rather than put up the graph of total sheep numbers or total ewe numbers which were which have been in a pretty much a steady decline since 1989 I've, I've pulled out a graph from our plant, plant farm bankwest benchmarks which has shown the the average cropping um, the average farm over the last six years and this is the period 2004 to 2009 and if you look at this what you'll see is that the area of pasture, that's the area at the top that's in green, that's remained fairly steady over the last six years. But while we've had our area of pasture remain steady, the total farm size has increased by pretty much spot on 20%. So converting that back, we've actually seen, it's really showing the area allocated to sheep has been falling, and it's really gone into your cereals, into your wheat, and to a lesser extent your barley. And the lettuce hasn't really changed very much. So what we've seen is that the cropping areas are steadily increased, with cereals being the driver. Now, of course, when you're increasing the cost, when you're increasing your um, area planted to crops and removing your pasture, what, what's going to happen is there's going to be this steady increase in operating costs and, and here I've, I've just graphed two things. The, the blue line on the bottom, that's our operating expenses. And you might not be able to quite get it from the scale, but operating expenses from 1998 to today have increased every year. So every year we've gone through and said average operating costs across the farm. What were they last year? OK, well, how much are we going to add on this year? So we've gone into a system where operating costs have risen steadily. And while they've risen steadily, income, the, the pink line at the top, has um, it's bounced around a fair bit. Now, there's some some of some of that is inflation. You know, we've watched fuel prices go up, we've watched fertilizer prices go up. But I actually think a lot of it has been the change in the enterprise mix, in that as we've gone to more cereals, we've gone to a system that the option is not am I going to crop or am I going to run it to stock? It's more an option of am I going to crop or am I going to leave it fallow? And if that's the, the attitude we're taking, then we're more likely to go, well, look, I'll just put something in and I'll hope, but we're building a higher cost system. And when I look at a graph like this and I look at the, the average yield graphs, I go, the question that I'm asking is are we chasing yield? And then when I look at the the yields that are coming out, that the five-year or seven-year averages that are now going downwards, not upwards, I'm not sure if we're doing the right thing. So 
I sort of sit there and I go, okay, well, have we built a higher cost system? And I think we have, which has a really big impact in a, in a year where we're coming out of this year or coming into this year. And then my next question is, have we built a higher profit system? I think we have built a higher profit system in really good years, but in average and below average years, I'm not sure we have. And then putting my banking hat on, what it means is every time you go to roll the dice, the size of the dice, where it's a little one, it's now getting a lot bigger. And you know, they're out there throwing these really big dice. And, and that's what we've really seen, which we'll talk about in a little while. I've put up here a graph of farm equity and farm debt. And if you look at the, the, um, the yellow bars on the bottom, what we can see is farm debt per arable hectare. And we can see this steady increase in, in farm debt. And farm debt per hectare basically going up pretty much every year from 1998 to today. Now, I could also pull out data that would reflect this quite closely if I looked at consumer debt. And consumer debt has gone through a similar splurge of, of debt. So I'm not criticising farmers, I'm just putting it up to say there's a lot more debt out there. And, and then the issue that we have is that if you're carrying more debt, um, then every year you have to find more to pay that debt because we're not going to turn around and say, oh, that's great, you know, don't worry about paying the interest this year, you've had a hard year. Unfortunately, our business model doesn't work that way. Um, and then the blue line that I put on is farm equity. And, and this is a line that we're seeing that, that farm equity has slowly declined Back in 98, we were sitting at about 85% of average farm equity across, and this is across the whole state from our Plan Farm Bankwest benchmarks. That's the Bankwest data only, but it's, it's very similar. Um, and then it's decreasing down, and at the end of 2000, at the start of 2010, we had farm debt at just under 75%. And I can run you through a game that will say, okay, well, if you're running average operating costs at about 70% and your, so average operating costs about 70%, grain costs, or grain income costs, wheat costs at about $260, $270 a tonne, farm operating costs sitting there, then you're going to start experiencing some pretty borderline systems with normal drawings and machinery replacements in the low 70% on average. So where we're sitting at, when we're sitting at farm equity at 75, is we're sort of close to the edge for the average farm to be at the point where their viability is questionable. Um, and it's a game I do play occasionally, but it's not a fun one at the moment. Now, increasing farm debt is not an issue if farm income is increasing. If my mortgage was $100,000 five years ago and I was earning $50,000, but my mortgage is after tax, but my mortgage is $200,000 now, but I'm earning $100,000, is it really such a big thing? Not really. Um, but, and so what I've done here is I've pulled out, I've taken the same graph from previously where you can see that, that line of the total farm debt per hectare. And I've converted that into the blue line on this graph. And I've then, at the same time, put in farm income. And farm income being the, the pink line. And we can see this, as farm debt's been increasing, farm debt has been increasing slowly but it's not increasing as much. And then the yellow line, I've divided debt to income. And then in the black line, sorry, there's too many lines on this chart, but in the black line, I've just averaged out just a linear straight line trend. And what we can see is that 
while farm debt's been going up, farm income has been going up, but farm income's not going up fast enough to equal the debt. So we can't say, oh, there's no issue. We're not, we're not seeing that steady increase in income that's going to offset the increase in debt. And so more of the income each year has to go into, into paying your interest costs. And then when I look at the, the yellow line, I can see that our debt to income ratio, which I've got on the, on the right hand side there, um, that's now getting really close to that 1.5. And a rule of thumb that we work on is once your debt to income, um, and this is separate, this is total debt to income, not, not long term debt only, but once your total debt to income ratio gets above about 1.5, you're having to put a lot of, you're starting to get to the point where things are in trouble. So lots of different ways I'm looking at it, I'm looking at the system at the start of 2010 was in trouble. And so then I go back to this chart and I start to look at what's happening what's happening this year. And what we're seeing is, you know, the, the losses are variable, but we're seeing losses certainly um, in the eastern and southeastern wheat belt in the range of um, four to five hundred thousand dollars on average. And when I project that out, I'm projecting out losses in that area of, of a, you know, around about 10%, seven to 13% are the figures that we're working on. Now as we move further north um, and down to Esperance, that's not the issue. So on average, we're not gonna see this massive increase, but we are gonna see in the eastern and the southeastern wheat belt, a big drop off in equity. And if I just extend that from this graph, it's really starting to scare me. Um, this is a, a chart that, that Greg put together for me, um, or had put together, and what we've done here is we've just gone through and, and looked at average farm equity across the state based on the, the ag zones, and you can see the, um, it's really that the southeastern wheat belt where the average equity is, is fallen below 70%. So that's sort of starting to, to, to indicate on average that the, the farm equity in the, the yellow and the red areas is probably the areas of, of greatest risk at the moment. Um, there are areas that have got done poorly and average equity is low. And when we're looking at average equity below 70%, then there's a lot that are a long way below that. So it's really starting to identify the areas at greatest concern, but also um, show that, that we're in trouble. 